This is the first tutorial I'm going to do in a series of tutorials on Corel Draw. Some simple techniques to get some special effects and maybe some uh, interesting ways to use the program in a more of a production sense for artists. Um, this first one, I'm just going to show a simple way. You take this simple clip art here. We're going to put a little text on it real quick and then we're going to create some custom halftones in Corel you can do without leaving the program. Kind of an interesting workaround for those of you that are in screen printing that may want to create half tones without using a rip you can rip it to an inkjet printer on some vellum maybe to produce positives and produce your own screen so one thing I always like to do is I'll type out all my text all at the same time so we just kind of put our text in here and then we're going to create a font size for it and I do like to use a lot of quick keys so I'll try to mention them when I when I come to them, if I start quick keying really fast, and um, when you hit this, sometimes you have to wait. Depends on how many uh, how many fonts you have in your system. You might have to wait a little longer. Um, just want to use an athletic font, I think here. So we just kind of pop in athletic here. Oops, just go here. We go, and then I drag that out. Break it apart. Control K. So if I type two or three lines, I can. Control K and break them apart kind of quick. You align everything just by clicking them together and hitting the C key. And then we're going to make a bow tie out of this, which is pretty common for this type of graphic. So you just kind of pull it together. Quick way to make a bow tie is to go over here to your effect interactive menu here. And you grab the blend tool. Make sure it's on this middle single arc mode. You hold the um, shift key down and you kind of punch it in. Kind of make a make a bow tie. It's kind of a simple technique. It's pretty popular for this type of graphic. So once you get that bow tied, you can place it up above your other one. I'm going to do a single arc, only one direction. So I'm just going to pull this one up. And then we're just going to do a single arc on the top. So instead of holding shift here, I'm just going to drag the top down. And then I have two arcs with my kind of graphic in the middle. I'm going to shrink it just a little bit. Whenever you do a type manipulation like this, a lot of times it's good to save your file. So control S. Now we're going to get to the the customizing part. So take the inside of this. I want to make a pretty big outline first. So we're going to go outside of it. We'll probably just do an 8 point. And then if you hit the F12 key, that brings up the outline menu. Um, and I just want to make it like a gray. I'll put it behind my fill. I always like the scaled image with the outlines. Now, if the fill doesn't look right, this is a little quirky thing. Sometimes you see in Corel 4, Corel 5, too, um, is it changes the default mode. So I like to kind of click it there. And sometimes it's not big enough, so you kind of bump it up a little bit. You may have to, if you hit the default, that'll square it off. Sometimes when you do envelopes and that sort of thing, it makes it a little strange. And then I can just click, drag it down here, or right click and drag it, and then you copy outline. So it has the same outline on both spots. Now I want to make a little highlight shadow here. And I'm going to also add my half tones in the top and the bottom. I'm going to do that kind of quick um, with the contour tool. The contour is already open. That would be effects contour. In this case, it's already open. So I go ahead and use that. I'm going to lower it a little bit uh, down to maybe 5. I'm going to make sure it's a different color so I can see it. Just see what the effect is. Now this also has a, it also copies the outline when you contour it, but don't worry about that too much. I'm going to go ahead and do this one too. And I can select them both in Control K, which breaks the contour part. You can do them individually, but you can do them both. It's a little faster. I select them both and then I right click, takes that or takes the outside outline off. Now I have these two that are just groups of three images here, or three pieces, and then group of six. Select them both again. I'm going to duplicate them. Control D. I have my duplicates set to zero up in here. You can see that. I'll show you that later. And then you, you select to make them black. And then I'm just going to nudge them off with the nudge tool. A little bit this way and a little bit this way. So there I have my uh, have them off a little bit so you get that little bit of shadow. And then what I do is I zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to do a quick little effect. This is a nice way to make an effect. You click the top piece. Hold the shift key, click the bottom piece right below it there, and then you just trim it. And then I can just kind of delete that top one. That doesn't look like much happened, but what actually, sometimes this will overlap and you don't want it to. So you just kind of get rid of that top one after you've done trimming it out. So let me trim it out. 
and then I can dump the top one. And then I have that little highlight there. Now a nice thing to do on that highlight again, like I said, is you can put in just a little bit of uh, color into that. And do that with the, um, the fountain fill. And we'll just do something simple. I don't want to put too many colors into this thing, so we'll just kind of go here. Maybe do a vertical blend of these. So that gives it just a little bit of pop there against the gray. You see it gets a little energy going. And then that's a nice fade there. And now I want to make my custom half tone because I want this to kind of punch out of this thing like bang, right? So to make a custom half tone in Corel, first I'm going to save my file, Control S. Make a custom half tone. What we're going to do is going to make a circle like the shape of the fist here. I'm going to make that with, say, 80% black. And then I duplicate that. Again, Control D, and that's, this is where you set that. Make sure your um, duplicates are set at zero. So it goes right on top of it. I Control D, duplicate. And then I click, hold the Shift key, drag it out. I don't want to go much bigger than the image size here. So I'm just going to hold the Shift key and contract it there a little bit. And then I'm going to make that white. And I'm going to hold the Shift key and pull page down. And I'll punch it behind everything. No pun intended. Ah. And uh, I click on both, and then I'm going to leave, actually I'm going to click off it here, just so I can show, because I want to leave those, uh, I was going to click on both and take the outline off, but I'm going to show what I'm doing here a little bit, it'll show a little better if I leave the outlines on, at least temporarily, so I can click this and I can just drag it here, and you're going to see how that blends, right, it creates that kind of grayscale blend, and if I leave the lines on, at least temporarily, you can kind of see, see it a little better. That's pretty smooth. I'm going to go shift the page down again because I want to put that behind everything. And now we're going to, we want to turn that into those big chunky half tones. Those are that's a pretty cool thing. So I'm going to you know, I click on nothing here. Let's go ahead and click on minus. Take the half tones off. It's pretty smooth. And once I convert it to half tones, it'll it'll leave them look better. Now if I wanted it to be 100% like solid black here. I would have had to pick black for my centerpiece, and then the pieces would all blend together totally. But I want them to be split. I want the dots to split when I, and you'll see what I mean when I pull it in here. Now the next step is to go ahead and convert this to half tones. Always save my file first, um, and then bitmap convert to bitmap. You got to go high. You got to go like 600 DPI to get a good round dot when you do this. Grayscale is right. Say okay. You're not going to see much change. The background might get a little fuzzier is about it. And you've, what you've done is you've just made all these pieces into a solid square. I can go to wireframe and show you real quick. So you've made a solid square out of a shape that was. I control Z, went back, and then I go forward again. So you made all those shapes into this bit map, map square. Now, what you can do now is real quick, this is a nice little trick, is, is just convert this. Since it's 600 DPI, you can convert this into a black and white. You want it to be a half tone. You don't want it to be square. It'll go round. And then I'll zoom out a little bit. You right click in this spot and it'll start to show you what it's going to happen here. I might, just, you know, left click here, zoom in a little bit so I can see here. And I'll leave them at 45 because it's just for, this isn't for screen printing per se, it's just for visual. And I'm going to go like 12 point. So that makes a big old chunky dot here. Maybe I'll go a little higher than that. I'll go uh, 10. So you can see how big of a dot that is. I'll say OK. So you see now I have these big dots right here. Which is kind of cool. It doesn't, you know, maybe it's not quite dense enough there, right? And if it's not dense enough, you're like, oh, maybe I want a little bit darker there. So what you can do is just back it up. Back it up two steps. And I'll kick this uh, shift page up. I'll kick this back up and I'll change my control lips, the top one. Maybe I will change that to black. Okay, so I want it a little solid, maybe I even enlarge it just a little bit. And that'll make my dots closer together here. And then I'll push it down, and I'll go through the same thing again. A little bitmap, convert to bitmap, grayscale. Okay. Now you can understand, once you've done this, you're going to see that, you know, yeah, you could do this at 45 dpi on for these little fades. You're going to separate them out, and I'll show that in a later tutorial. But for now, I'm just kind of showing a simple way for a background. We're creating a background here, so bitmap mode, black and white. Once it's grayscale and you got it at 600 dpi, you can do this. And I'm going to right-click and zoom out a little bit. Now you'll notice that 
this half tone here go around. And then we'll go, what was it, 10 before? Maybe we'll go even a little bit bigger. Well, 9, right? And I'll go, okay. Now you notice it's solid in the middle. Now this is a little, another little trick that's important to remember. If I wanted this to be 100% black, in this case I don't really care, but if I wanted this to be 100% black, what I have to do, I'm going to go back here just for those folks that, that are going to want this, because you will want it if you're doing a different application where it's for separation and this has to be solid. What you want to do to get this process, instead of this black down here, the CMYK black, which I get with this palette, I have to switch palettes. I have to click this black, and then I'm going to have to go down here. I'm going to double click this, and it's going to open up my, my uniform fill box. And then what I need to do, I need to go to grayscale and make sure it's 100% black in grayscale mode. And it won't look like much of a difference here, and it may even show just black here. When you're grayscale mode, and now I convert this to, I only need to change the black, not really the white. I only, and then I convert this to the 600 dpi grayscale, and then I convert it to black and white. Now you see how it's solid black now. You had to do that, and then we'll go around. We're gonna do about nine. See now it went solid black because I've changed that black to grayscale mode, and now it gives me 100% black when I go into that. And now uh, another trick when you're working with a black and white bitmap here, and I don't want to have this square, so I just say no fill on it, and then I'm gonna put it to the back shift page down. And I'm going to make it kind of a gray, so it blends with this maybe a little bit, maybe even a little lighter. And you can see how that background now is really creating that kind of funky effect. And then, you know, you could always do something else here. Maybe create a star, 20 points maybe, and then just punch this out of it. You know, to give you that kind of blam, Lichtenstein or whatever you want to say, that old Batman movie kind of pot or pow kind of thing coming out of it. And I'll grab that and I'll hit shift and I'll punch it to back. And so now you got these dots, but you got this kind of thing knocking them out. So it's kind of a cool way to do a quick effect. And that shows you a quick way to create half tones in Corel. And in the next tutorial, we'll show you some actual separation work using this method. And if you zoom in, you'll notice, yeah, those dots look pretty good.